All right, adventurers and storytellers, we're diving into the 11 places your fantasy town absolutely needs. Hold on to your wizard hats and let's roll. First is the tavern, the heartbeat of every town. You need a warm bed? Tavern. Rumors about the local dragon? Tavern. An unexpected quest? Tavern. Taverns date back nearly 4,000 years to ancient Babylon and have long been the lifeblood of societies from Greek leshes to Roman taverns bustling with all kinds of secretive people and drinkers. Taverns are the precursors to modern inns. With how much went on inside them, think of them as the social media of their day. Hubs for trade, news, and yes, even revolutions. This tradition sailed across the Atlantic with colonists, embedding itself in the fabric of American culture. Every mug of ale and every tune from the bard carries a story, a rumor, a piece of history. Without a tavern, a town lacks soul, warmth, and the spark of shared camaraderie. There's a reason most adventures start in a tavern. Next up, let's talk governance and administration, the backbone of any functioning town. At the core of every town lies its seat of power, a crucial anchor for governance. Whether it's a stately town hall or a formidable castle, this is where the wheels of leadership turn. Within these walls, lords or council members debate, decisions are forged, and the rule of law is upheld. Your town lives are decided here, from the settling of disputes to the planning of festivals. Next on our list, the pillars of health and well-being in any town, the healers. This can be a cleric, an herbalist, a barber, but whatever the case, they serve as the town's safeguard against the myriad of ailments and injuries that can befall its residents, especially when the local or or goblins decide it's time for a raid. Historically, barbers were jacks of all trades, handling everything from haircuts to amputations. Think of them as the medieval equivalent of a one-stop shop for health. From concocting potions to stitching wounds, these individuals are essential in keeping the populace hale and hearty. Moving along, we can't overlook the bustling epicenter of commerce and chatter, the marketplace. It all starts with a handful of folks, a fisherman, a farmer, maybe a blacksmith, each with their own goods looking for a spot to trade. And this isn't just any spot, it's like the prime real estate of the town, right where paths cross and people are bound to meet. Up. Over time, this spot, once just a casual meeting place, starts buzzing with activity. More and more people show up, each with something different to offer. We've got veggies fresh from the fields, fish straight from the river, and crafts that are just mind-blowing in their creativity. This is where the magic of the marketplace begins. Now think about where our town is located. If it's by a forest, then we're talking about a marketplace rich with timber, herbs, maybe even some rare ingredients for potions. Is it by the sea? Then expect a lot of fish, sea salt, and tales of mysterious creatures from the deep. The town's location literally shapes the marketplace like a potter shape clay. So our marketplace evolves, right? It becomes this incredible hub of trade, gossip, and maybe the odd secret deal or two. It's no longer just about buying and selling. It's where friendships are made, where alliances are formed, and hey, where adventurers like us might just stumble upon our next epic quest. In essence, the marketplace is the town's beating heart. Now let's talk about the place of learning and magic, the mage's tower or arcane school. Back in the day, schools were a big deal, starting out teaching mostly religious stuff before branching into all sorts of subjects. Ancient Greece had spots like Plato's Academy and Aristotle's Lyceum, where people came to debate and discuss everything from philosophy to science. Then came the Middle Ages in Europe with universities like the one in Paris that changed the game, focusing on stuff like theology, law, and medicine. In a fantasy world, this translates to the Mages Tower or Arcane University or school. This isn't just where you go to learn a few spells. It's a hub of magical knowledge where magic meets science and philosophy. These places are key in understanding magic on a deeper level, shaping the towns and adventurers and understanding of the mystical world. Just like those ancient academies and medieval universities shaped learning and ideas in the real world. Continue our journey through the essential places of our fantasy town, we arrive at the smithy and the workshop area. This place is all about the clang of the hammer and the heat of the forge. Historically, blacksmiths were the backbone of any town. They were the ones who made the tools that built the homes, the weapons that defended them, and the horseshoe that kept transportation moving. In medieval times, a town's prosperity could often be measured by the skill of its blacksmiths. In your fantasy world, this tradition continues. Here, skilled artisans forge swords that could slay dragons and armor that can turn the tide against the fiercest of blows. It's not a place of work, it's a crucible where the ordinary is transformed into the extraordinary. Next, we turn our attention to the town's religious center, be it a temple, a church, or a shrine. Throughout history, religious institutions have been more than just places of worship. They've been centers of community, education, and aid. In medieval Europe, monasteries were renowned for preserving knowledge and were often the only place where people could learn to read and write until books became much more accessible after the 16th century. In your fantasy town, the religious center can serve as a similar multi faceted role. It's not just for spiritual guidance, but also a place for healing and learning and sometimes a sanctuary against dark forces. Now let's talk about the guards' barracks and the town watch. Historically, the security of a town was paramount. From Roman fortresses to medieval castles, the protection they provided formed the core of any settlement. In your fantasy town, the guards' barracks is where the brave souls who protect the town live and train, whether they're volunteers or not. It's a place of discipline and strength, a bulwark against the chaos of the outside world. Here, plans are made to safeguard the town and heroes are 
born from the ranks of those who choose to stand against that darkness or that weird goblin. Then there's the water source. Every fantasy town needs a reliable water source, crucial for life and daily activities. Historically, civilizations flourished near rivers, lakes, or springs due to the necessity of water for drinking, farming, and trade. For example, Rome was built near the Tiber River, which was essential for its growth and prosperity. In a fantasy setting, the water source takes on an added layer of significance, or it could just be a well, a normal well. Or it could lead to a network of tunnels. There could be mystical waters under the town square, a river coursing with magical currents, or a hidden spring with healing properties. Next, we have the essential food source. In the real world, towns had to be self-sufficient in terms of food, with farmlands and pastures that often surrounded the settlement. In ancient times, the food source was a critical component of any town's survival and development. Towns were often established in locations where food could be readily produced or acquired, which significantly influenced their growth and prosperity. Many ancient towns were built near fertile lands. The ability to grow crops like wheat, barley, rice, or corn was essential. These agricultural areas produced the staple foods needed to sustain the population. The annual flooding of rivers like the Nile in Egypt created fertile land, which was a boon for agricultural production. Alongside agriculture, the domestication of animals played a crucial role. Animals like cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, they were raised for meat, milk, and other byproducts. This not only provided food, but also labor for farming and transportation. Ancient towns also relied on trade to supplement their food sources. Towns located along trade routes had access to a variety of foods and goods that were not locally available. For example, towns along the Silk Road traded extensively, exchanging local goods for spices, grains, and other commodities from distant lands. Proximity to water bodies like rivers, lakes, and seas meant access to fish, which was a significant food source in ancient towns. In coastal towns, fishing was a major industry. Similarly, hunting provided meat and other resources from the surrounding forests and wilderness areas. In a fantasy setting, these aspects could be enhanced with magical elements. Fertile lands might be enriched by mystical means, animals could be unique creatures with special properties, and trade routes could involve exotic and magical goods. The fundamental need for a reliable food source remains, but in a fantasy world, the ways in which this need is met can be as diverse and imaginative as the setting itself. And finally, in every town, maintaining law and order is essential. The town jail represents this aspect of civic life. Historically, jails were not just for punishment. They were a means to hold individuals until their guilt or innocence could be determined. In medieval towns, the presence of a jail was a sign of a town's commitment to law and order. This is why in the Wild West, cowboys flourished where those untamed areas couldn't be established by federal means yet, not until the towns grew in size. In your fantasy world, the town jail takes on additional layers of complexity. It might hold not just ordinary thieves or troublemakers, but also magical beings, creatures of dark lore, or enemies of the state. The jail could be fortified with magical wards or contain powerful sorcerers or have secret cells for high-profile prisoners. It could even be a place where innocent people are kept if that's the type of town you want to create. In the end, the jail and its use shows the lengths the town will go or not go to protect its citizens and uphold or not uphold justice. And there you have it, folks, the 11 indispensable locations your fantasy town needs to be complete. Each of these locations plays a crucial role in weaving the rich tapestry of your town story. So next time you're crafting your fantasy world, remember these essential spots and watch as your town comes alive with stories waiting to be told. If you think we missed something, leave it in the comments down below. And now for those perceptive adventurers keeping an eye out for Tobias the Displacer Kitten, here's a quick shout out for some of those. Valen13, so adorable, yes. Nathan Zander, 1938, Tobias, so cute, with like five O's. Michaelston, 9933, who said Tobias in the house. That just makes me want to ask the editor to do like a little rave, Tobias. darkness 9 says Tobias is adorable and deserves scritches. Yes, yes he does. Spine Sauce 2687 I love your content. It's really well done and I'm sorry I didn't subscribe sooner. I can't wait to see more from you. Thank you so much for that. I love hearing that. And William Santosi 2211 says 11 for animal handling. I suppose that passes, but just barely. Thanks again, adventurers. Make sure to leave a timestamp of where you saw Tobias in our videos and you might be the lucky one that gets shouted out in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching. For John, my friends, and we'll see you next time, adventurers. Thank you.